This talk is about a visual instruction set simulator that we have developed to teach computer architecture to beginners at ESU, a French school of engineering in electronics and computer science. The curriculum at ESU covers many topics. In the first year of engineering studies, we propose an introduction to embedded systems and digital electronics. In the first semester, Computer architecture is exposed from the point of view of a software developer who needs to understand how a computer works. In the second semester, students learn the basics of digital circuit design and FPGAs. The perspective changes from using a computer to making a computer. What about using the same instruction set architecture in both semesters? Our ideal architecture would be free to use study and implement without asking for permission. It would have a simple and regular instruction set, easy to understand and to implement in hardware by beginners. It would be a good illustration of the concepts used in commercial processors today, and it would have a free and open source tool chain. Several options were considered, including creating our own architecture. We were ready to settle on a trade-off between these requirements, but we learned about RISC-V and we found that it was very close to our ideal architecture. So we made two things. We developed a small processor core called Virgul that implements most instructions from the base unprivileged RISC-V instruction set. Virgul follows the embedded RV32E programmer's model with 16 general purpose registers. It does not support memory ordering instructions, environment call or breakpoints. The core and its bus interface are simple enough so that a student could implement it with appropriate guidance. Then we developed a simulator that matches the architecture of our processor core. It implements exactly the same instruction set and the same interrupt mechanism. The simulator can help answer several questions about how a computer works. How are data and instructions represented in memory? What are the typical steps to run an instruction? And which functional units are involved in each step? How peripherals are mapped to memory addresses? What is an interrupt? To fulfill these goals, we took inspiration from a simulator developed by Peter Higginson for a similar purpose. We wanted to have a visual representation of the processor's functional units and buses, with animated data transfers while an instruction is executed. Our simulator has a very specific scope. It provides the appropriate abstraction level to illustrate a typical computer architecture, independently of a specific hardware implementation. For this reason, it is not cycle accurate. It is an educational tool and is not meant to be used as a general-purpose debugger, in terms of features as well as performance. What does it look like? Emulsive is a web application that runs in most recent browsers. The simulated computer has 4 kilobytes of RAM. The user interface provides a memory view that shows raw hexadecimal data as well as an assembly column that can also show an integer or ASCII representation of data. The data path view shows an abstract representation of the functional units of the processor. The yellow boxes are registers. The arrows are not actual hardware buses, but rather a representation of the possible data transfers. Basic I.O. peripherals are available, but more will come in a future version. On the left, Text input and output devices model a very basic character receiver and transmitter. They are attached to text fields in the user interface, where users can type characters or where characters are displayed. The text input device can be configured to request interrupts. On the right, the bitmap view has 32 rows of 32 pixels and is mapped to the last kilobyte of RAM with 8 bits per pixel. When executing a program, you can choose between several options. The Run button will run the program from the current instruction 
and continue until the program is paused or until a breakpoint is met. The step button executes instructions one by one. The fetch, decode, ALU, compare, memreg and PC indicators show the current elementary step of an instruction execution, but users can also click on them to trigger the animation of a specific step. You can find the simulator at this address. I will now make a short demo of the main features. The first thing that you can do when you open the simulator for the first time is to choose an example from the drop-down menu. The default program corresponds to the Hello example. It will simply display Hello in the text output. The memory view shows the raw current content of the RAM. The rightmost column shows the same data in a human-readable form. It can be assembly instructions, but also ASCII characters. This reveals the hello string starting at address 20x. At startup, the program counter is 0, which means that execution will start at address 0. Let's animate the execution of the first instruction. I will enable animations and set them to a reasonable speed. In the fetch step, the simulator shows how the processor reads an instruction from memory. The current program counter is copied to the address bus. The data word at this address is available from the data bus and is copied to the instruction register. In the decode step, we show the meaning of each instruction field. The current operation to perform, the source and destination register numbers, the immediate value. In this case, an add immediate operation has been recognized with x0 as source register, x1 as the destination register, and 20x as the immediate operand. The operation input of the ALU and comparator are updated accordingly. The ALU step computes the arithmetic or logic operation result from the operands A and B. And when applicable, for conditional branch instructions, a compare step can also be available. The memreg step updates the target register or memory location. In this case, the result is copied to X1. The PC step updates the program counter. Let's run the program until the next store instruction. I will first disable the animations temporarily, set a breakpoint in front of the SB instruction, and press run. At this point, we can see that x2 is C followed by seven zeros, which is the address of the data buffer of the character transmitter. x3 is 48 in hexadecimal, which is the ASCII code for an H character. The SB instruction will copy this byte to the data buffer of the character transmitter, and hopefully, an H will be displayed. In the memreg step, we can see that the ALU result is copied to the address bus, and X3 is copied to the data bus. Finally, an interesting feature of the simulator is the ability to edit the memory content directly in hexadecimal, assembly, or ASCII form, for instance. We can modify the current instruction to update X1 by 2 instead of 1. Let's rewrite it as add i, x1, x1, 2. You can see that the instruction has been re-encoded with the new immediate value. We can also manipulate the bitmap view directly by editing the last kilobyte of RAM. Clicking in the bitmap will highlight the memory location that corresponds to the current pixel. For instance, we can set this pixel to white by writing ff in the corresponding byte. This interface encourages experimentation. Students can freely observe the effects of a program when the content of memory changes. The simulator has been used with success during the first semester of this year, and we are progressively creating new exercises and challenges for our students. ML Service Free Software See the links at the bottom right of the screen to read its documentation, get the source code, 
report issues and contribute to its development. Thanks for your attention.